Imagine you're getting in your car, ready to go to a new restaurant to meet a friend, which is quite the concept given the past few years. When you reach your phone to get the directions, you realize suddenly there's no map feature or any driving app with directions on it at all. Seriously, you ask yourself, how will I know how to get there? You reach into your glove compartment for a paper map, but honestly, who uses those anymore? You realize you don't have one either. So you have two choices. You can cancel your plans or drive around until you find the place, probably while on the phone with your friend as they guide you in the right direction. Both options seem like a drag compared to just typing in the location on your phone. Maps. No matter how small, they're important tools in life. You don't always know which streets to turn down or which highways to merge onto or where to find the closest bakery. I mean, come on, these things are important. And you probably don't take a look at paper maps too often when your phone is readily available. You don't even realize how important directions are until you don't have any. Sometimes in life, you find yourself without direction on a much grander scale. Have you ever found yourself asking, what do I do with my life now? Fortunately, maps can help you imagine new experiences, new places for yourself. Have you ever looked at a big map of the world and put pens in places that you've been or where you'd like to go? I have, for sure. Maps help us picture where we want to go, and they show us how to get there. They make us curious. But it's your own unique map and inner compass that will help you answer this question, what do I do with my life now? This type of map is the one that you draw with your life experiences, your, your mistakes, your successes, your failures, your goals, all of those things. It's the sum of all parts. There are so many roads that can guide you to where you want to be. Some roads are freshly paved and are as smooth as glass. And some feel a bit more like you're off-roading. But in the end, the destination is usually the one we're destined to arrive, regardless of the path. So let's learn how to use our unique maps, this inner compass, to get direction when we feel, well, directionless. You might even discover that being lost isn't such a bad thing. I'm Chad Lawson, and let's comment down in three, two, one. All this talk about maps reminds me of the Dr. Seuss book, All the Places You'll Go. And the part I like is, you have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. You're on your way, and you know what you know, and you are the one who will decide where to go. Oh, such brilliant writing. I bet a lot of you received a number of all the places you'll go as a gift for your high school or college graduation. And this quote is even in greeting cards, and for good sentimental reason, who doesn't love Dr. Seuss? But it's an empowering message. You'll go in the direction you choose, using the tools you have, and you're capable of figuring everything out as you go along. Your inner compass is one of the tools that you have, along with the brain in your head and the feet in your shoes, as Dr. Seuss says. And this compass is your intuition. And it can help you even when you have a clear idea of where you want to go. Maybe the path to your goals seems clear-cut at first. If you want a PhD, there are schools that will get you there. Or if you want to help others, there are dozens of places to volunteer. Your compass guides you when things become a little bit more challenging, too. Your compass can point you in that right direction. 
Listen to the natural gut feeling you get when you make a decision. It's informed by every decision you make and all the lessons you learn along the way. You start by being bold and making a choice. It seems like you're on cruise control and then smack. All of the sudden, things go wrong and you no longer feel like you're on the right road at all. The school you chose for your PhD starts to feel like a eh, not so great fit. Or the volunteer work you're doing is, I don't know, less satisfying than you hoped it would be. So you ask yourself, what now? Where do I go? When you listen closely to your gut, your compass can gently point you towards a different direction. One that feels right, even if it feels risky. You're bold and brave and you make another decision just like you did to begin with. Each time you do a little course correction, your intuition becomes a little louder and you learn more and more about yourself. I'm going to say that again because it's so key. Each time you do a little course correction, your intuition becomes a little louder and you learn more about yourself. Every decision forms a different route for you to take. It takes a lot of bravery. After all, if you thought your life's dream was to get a PhD and you realize it's not your dream anymore, it can be super scary to make a new decision. But trusting your inner compass is all about creating your own unique map. But what if you didn't have a specific goal in mind? What if you simply just didn't know what to do next. It would be pretty nice if some difficult life decisions were planned out for us because there are all kinds of tough choices to make in life. What career path do you choose? What do you do if you're in a relationship that isn't fulfilling? If we had a map already written out for us, all we would need to do is follow the directions. But we have a lot of control in determining what the map of our lives look like. And that's a wonderful thing. What if I told you, you are always one decision away from living a totally different life. Every decision you make can lead you down in an entirely new path. Is it nerve wracking? <laughs> a little. But it's also pretty empowering. Not every decision you make is going to have a perfect outcome. Did you hear that? Not every decision you make is going to have a perfect outcome. And that's the beauty, sometimes, of feeling a little lost. As you create new roads of your own map, you open yourself up to more opportunities and experiences. You learn. You recognize, hey, you know what? It wasn't the best idea. I'm not going to ruminate on it. I'm just going to move forward. And I'm going to keep that in my mind next time. With the help of your inner compass, you'll find which of these opportunities speak to you. You'll feel less and less directionless by simply following the path that you feel takes you forward. And you can always correct this course when you need to. But of course, some things just don't happen at random. I'm reminded by the brilliant quote by the boxer Mark Tyson, Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. It's a bit aggressive, but it's a great analogy. A sudden job loss, the end of a relationship, or becoming sick. These are all events that can definitely throw a wrench in your plans. These things can happen even if you make deliberate, careful, super thought out decisions. They're no fault of your own. Try not to view these disruptions as a sign that you've made their own choice. But view them as different routes that branch off the road that you are following, creating a new path for you to take. Remember that your unique map is filled with errors so that you can arrive at the truth. I'm going to say that again because I even need to hear that again. Remember that your unique map is filled with errors detours, 
so that you can finally arrive at the truth. There are thousands and thousands of different roads to follow. And sometimes the most fulfilling ones are the ones that we never planned on exploring. Allow yourself a sense of curiosity when rerouting your plans. You're writing your own story. A beautiful thing about our inner maps is that they're a lot like the maps professional cartographers create. Cartographers make maps designed to reflect different priorities, experiences, points of view, destinations. There are flight maps, population density maps, even cheese maps of Europe, which is pretty stellar. For centuries, people have used maps to make sense of the world and their surroundings. You are also a cartographer, mapping out your priorities, your experiences, your points of view, your destinations. No matter what challenges you face, how lost you feel, or how many random obstacles are thrown your way, you have a compass and a map that can help guide you. You have brains in your head and feet in your shoes. You have all the tools of a cartographer and all the bravery to make your map brilliant, bright, and full of highways and roads that will take you to some pretty exciting and unexpected places. Take the roads you come upon. Some are highways, some are trails to the forest, some are detours, some are direct. But in the end, your compass of intuition will guide you where you're supposed to go. To find more episodes of Calm It Down, hear the musical playlist from today's episode, or simply wanting to know where to send chocolate chip cookies, visit CalmItDownPodcast.com. You'll even find additional resources for emotional support, including our online community and our Facebook page. You're not alone. You are not alone. This podcast was produced by yours truly, Chad Lawson, composer, pianist, and nationally recognized Sweet Tooth. And now something my attorney wants me to say. The views, expressions, and techniques in this episode are of my personal opinion and is not intended to, nor should they serve as a substitute for medical advice or a diagnosis rendered to you by your individual doctor or other healthcare provider. Only a licensed physician should evaluate your situation, provide a diagnosis, or render other medical advice to you, and you should only act upon the advice of such physician. Now, what I'd like to say. I am an extreme empath by nature, but my profession is that of a composer and pianist, not a licensed therapist or physician. I hear from thousands of listeners how my music has helped them through various stages of emotional needs, and I simply want to offer this and future podcasts in aiding those needs. To find a list of licensed professionals in your area, please visit CalmItDownPodcast.com. And finally, if you've enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review. While it takes less than 60 seconds to do, its impact will last for years to come as every little bit helps in growing the awareness and the importance of emotional health. I'm Chad Lawson, and until next time, be kind to your mind, and join me next week as we calm it down.